right, welcome in to another episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast presented by the homies at Evoca TV. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, a.k.a. Merchel, joined, as always, by the man with the graphics plan, downtown Dwayne Brown. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's midweek. You know, we're officially heading down to match day. Uh, so this mm-hmm. is uh, the start of the best time of the week. And you, I saw you cooking up there on some stuff. Don't tell anybody what it is, but I can't work on secret DN5 VR rapid thing. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us today is the homie. You know him from Twitter. You know him from his site. You know him from his writing. You know him from the comment section here on DNVR. It is joseph samuelson my guy welcome back hey mitch good to be back thank you thank you guys as always for having me i'm ready to talk some pids you got your new setup going yeah we're in the new office i haven't gotten the scarf wall up yet uh Mm -hmm. in my old place i used to i used to like hang them up with push pins in the wall but this time i wanted to actually like do it right so long term we're gonna get like some like shower curtain rods or something like that Hang them, yeah, uh, yeah. hang them up, hang them up, and that way I can like actually take them down when I want to wear them. Um, there you go. What we a, have what spare bones for now, but yeah. we're in the office. Minimalist. The nice, yeah, focused. We're good, we're good. Yeah, intentioned. And Joseph. I got the Sammy Vines U.S. National Team jersey because oh man He's has been <laughs> man has been playing <laughs> like just. He's been playing so well for Antwerp. Love it. And um, wanted to show some show some love Sammy Vines' way. You know, shout out Sammy Vines. Also, shout out to super producer Yaya, who's in the background today. And he is just, that man is doing so much. Our guy, super producer Kale, is in Serbia doing that stuff with the DNVR Nuggets crew. Um, Ali obviously helping him out, but he is taking on a ton extra, so he's kind of doing some side work in the background. He might pop in if we get a takeoff that is hot enough, but for now it's going to be us today. Um, obviously, Yaya will return when Kale comes back uh, this week, so you know he won't be pulling triple duty anymore. So um, shout out to producer Yaya. You are the man. We appreciate you. Uh, we got a good little show today. Uh, Rapids kicking off a three-game road trip for the first time this season. I believe, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. First time, three games away. Um, two against the East, against East leading Philadelphia before a midweek clash against Nashville, a little revenge game, and then going to the bottom dwellers of the East, DC United. Um, there's some injury talk. There is some, uh, obviously, a little hangover from this weekend we'll get into. Um, Joseph, you were there. We were there. What was uh? I mean, give me your give me your sixty seconds on this game. Listen, man, it's like what we've seen all year. <laughs> it's like the Rapids. Like it isn't like there was some discussion after the game about like how good the Rapids actually were. Um, personally, like I was of the opinion like the midfield and the back line was pretty good for eighty minutes. Um, mm-hmm. the, that that final third play wasn't as great. Mm-hmm. Um. But listen, they still put themselves in a position to take three points. Yep. And then, like we saw all year, one miscue mm-hmm. completely completely ends that chance. And yeah. it was surprising how familiar this game felt, oh, not just it because did. we've seen this all year, but because we saw the exact same thing when they went to Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, literally. Against Houston, yeah. against Houston again. Against Houston again. It's the exact Sorry same game. Yelling, yeah, yeah, but man, come on where the Rapids do enough to take three points. Now, you can argue, as Juan and I kind of went back and forth on this on Twitter, <laughs> um, whether or not the Rapids were actually the better, like, uh, were the better team. I think they were better than Houston over the course of the entire 90 minutes. Like, if you took into account the whole game, the way the, uh, the, way the Rapids played in possession, sure, the final third approach wasn't as uh, clinical as we've seen even in recent games. But mm-hmm. they still did enough to get three points. Yeah, and it they was did. a huge yep. it was a huge two points to drop because now you listen, they got eight games left, five of them are on the road, and listen, they you probably need, need 15, five wins. Yeah, they probably need, need five wins. points. Yep. Yep, five wins. 
Yeah. Do we see that happening is like the big question. Look, crazier things have happened in the MLS. I'm not ready to make a prediction on it. Uh, you know, one thing I think got lost in this whole whole game, and especially the end, was Keegan having to come off with that quad. Um, yeah. Look, Beta's been great all season. I'm not saying it's like a big decline, but when you have to play the ten, the losing Keegan game, means you you have to yeah. deal. You have to put Beta Shore and Estevez on as opposed to yes. Beta Shore and Rosenberry, which Correct. in my opinion is but also, the best fullback pairing from this. Well, year. yeah, yeah, but also the the communication. The how many times have you practiced ten man, you know, ten man drills and and the communications, and it's not Beta and Lucas in that drill. 99% of the time. So I think that was a big underrated part of the ending there in terms of not being able to just get that last four seconds. Four seconds. Four seconds. But we move on. Dwayne, do you have anything else from that game? No. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> it feels like this game definitely broke a lot. Get out of here! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> my feelings on that one haven't changed. It's it's unfortunate. I just I keep thinking and I, and I don't really want to go too far down this road. I just keep thinking the last 3 games and how winnable they were yeah. and where we could be right now. And what I don't like is the clutching onto the strategy of but the rest of the West is really bad too. You know, like I, I don't want that to be our strategy. And, and I feel like that's kind of the strategy is, but everyone else is also blowing it. Whereas if we just. I think people, I, I don't think people are, are gripping that. I think it's like a nice side effect, you know, like it's, it's like rabbits have been blowing it, but. So is everybody, everybody else. else like so is everybody else. I just I just don't like that tag. Sure. It's unfortunate to me that that is tagged on to our situation, you know, yes. so frequently. And I get it that that's the only thing we have to cling to right now. Um, you know, uh, so I, I don't know. I'm just I'm ready to watch. <laughs> I'm ready to watch some more soccer and, and see what happens. Uh, I just I just wish that we were watching from nine more points. Which I think nine points over the last three games was totally doable. And I think there's I you know that. honestly like to me the I'm not so much. It was fresh. a season defining stretch. I do yeah. feel. I, I, I yeah. Dwayne is right on right on par with that because no, like right. even if they come out even if they come out of that stretch with six points, we're feeling. it. Real good. Yeah, this this pot is so happy right now because <laughs> it means it's my birthday tomorrow, bro. I'm okay. Oh, I'll show you guys what Dwayne got me for my birthday later. Surprise! You got to make it to the end of the pot. <laughs> it's pretty tight though. Um, but if they but they if they'd come out of this stretch against Columbus, Vancouver, Houston with three points, we're flying right now. Oh yeah, and not because yeah, 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 of course. And like there would still be a question, like. Uh, whether or not you know they, they could hold on to a spot down mm -hmm. the final stretch, mm -hmm. um, but we'd be feeling a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're looking at a schedule with, I mean, a lot of hard win. games. Yeah, you, you get you have you have <laughs> must win games against DC, Vancouver, San Jose, the Galaxy. Which and which Dallas. which? Hang on. Okay, you but, gotta okay, win but those of five. those of okay those first four. Because Dallas, I think, is pretty good. Those first four are teams. Well, they didn't beat Vancouver. They should have. And That's Canada home for us. sure. No, but they. It's they the okay. hope, Mitch. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. This is where my toxic positivity <laughs> ruins the podcast in the comment section. Oh, I love it. Um, I want to hear it because, like, but, but my point is, is like, a, like th this Rapids team this year has done so well mm -hmm. to like sort of like reel us in. Oh like, sure. To keep our oh, attention yeah, yeah, yeah. with. Oh yeah, they should win these games. No, no, because no. they are winnable games. To me, there's two games where points are unlikely to be nice, and that is at Austin. If there's anything on the line for Austin, and Saturday against Philadelphia, right? Like, hey, it would be here's the here's the the only the only qualifier to that is I was like, oh, LA's coming to town. We're screwed. Seattle's coming to town. 
were screwed. And they dominated those games. So would it be the most insane thing in the world if they came out and drew at Philly? Yes, it would be. It would be. It would be the most insane thing. But the other games, even including Dallas, throw Dallas in there. None of those games are intimidating on their own, right? Like none of them. Until you put into the equation, you have to get a result from you have to win five of the six. And and here, not to like sort of burst your bubble, but no, that burst, last game burst with Austin. It. Yeah. But even if they play Austin and Austin has nothing to play for on the final day, you know who that means? Th- that means there's another team that doesn't have anything to play for on the final day, and that's LAFC. Mm-hmm. And do you know who LAFC plays on the final day? No. Nashville. Oh, no. Literally, like, so yeah. even best case scenario, Rapids play Austin with Austin has nothing to prove. Mm-hmm. That would almost necessarily mean that LAFC is already locked at the supporter shield. Mm-hmm. And it would mean that they have nothing to play for either. Sure. And so they're also playing a direct. You need that rival. fifth win before. So you need five and seven, basically. From here, the on. Rapids need f- yeah. five wins, and they need to, or sure, they they need fifteen points, and they need yes. to not lose against Nashville. I feel. Yeah a six point swing in the opposite direction against it doesn't have to be that that game doesn't have to be a win. It could be mm-hmm. a draw, mm-hmm. but it cannot be a loss because I feel like giving three points back to Nashville down that final stretch. Right. I mean, that is like, we talk about must, you know, win or must point games. Yeah. This is the, like, no, it's that's the definition. They cannot yeah. lose. Well, it let's, would, no, no, no! You're you're absolutely right. They can't lose that game. Let's. I want to still. I want to get into Philly here. Me and Dwayne have talked about this Philly game quite a bit this week, just around around the office. Um, it is is the most intimidating game on the schedule and has been for a long time, right? Since they played LAFC away, I think this. A lot of people penciled this as like the next. So you mean hardest game match. one, and yeah. now game twenty whatever right uh the the dc or not dc philly has scored six goals as many times as the rapids have scored three plus this season (laughs) that is a real thing there might be one less but that still is like that doesn't include all the five goal four goal and three goal games that is just six um b ray says we're gonna we're going in there and win so that's pretty tight. Good job. BA. It would be the most rapids result of the year. See, that's where I keep going to. <laughs> no. And you're not wrong to go there because this season has defied expectations so much. Every, ex- a- a- every expectation when it's, when it's awful, it's like win streak when it's great, terrible loss, terrible draw, dumb mistake to ruin it. So Dwayne of the rapidsy rapids times you have rapided through. God, so many. <laughs> Rapid. Um, <laughs> where would this rank on the all-time Rapids get points when you don't need it or don't expect it? Like, where where is this Gosh. for you? I mean, it's it's a top five, if not a top three, because I yeah. mean, I'm not sure anyone outside of B-Ray is picking them to win. <laughs> So he says he says we beat Philly lose to DC. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the most rapid thing of all for this season. That would be on that would be on brand for this season for sure. So like I think last I think last decision day is a huge one, right? That's like the most rapid Z. Yes, that would right. be number one. Rapids winning. And Joseph, can you think of any other games to throw in there? I'm I'm literally looking. Mm-hmm. like into previous year's schedules right now because yeah. i already had the schedule up yeah and i'm just like scrolling through to see if i can like pick out a win and i and, I, and I'm, I'm waiting for uh 2019 to load right here because i do feel like the rapids got some really weird result after casey took control um over a team that they shouldn't have um oh yeah they beat uh they beat seattle Frazier's second game yep, in charge yep, in yep. 2019. Yep. That that was it. But that was at home too. Like, I mean, I feel like on the road is just another story in this league. Um, to me, there's like three teams had, in the MLS, right? It's like Philly, 
Austin and, and LAFC. And then kind of, kind of everybody else is kind of playing for yeah. the next tier, right? To go in to Philly, right on the river there, go in and even steal a point would be beyond epic, right? To me, and, and so, of course, me and Yaya were practice today and we're talking about how crazy it would be, right? Uh, and how could it even happen, right? Like, this is a goal-scoring juggernaut that's also really good defensively and makes you pay. That sounds like the worst possible matchup for the Rapids. Uh, but there's one way. To me, there's one, there's one way. And it is, and it's how they should finish the season is they need to run every single team into the ground, run to them into the ground, high press, turn, run, high press, turn, run. You're probably going to leak some goals, but if you can win three, two, that's the, that's the recipe for the rest of the season. If you want to hang on, am I crazy? You're a little crazy. Like I just the the matchup is just so bad. Like that's that's the thing. It's just the the matchup is just so bad. Thanks. It's just they, awesome. They, I I I want to so believe, fun. man. I want to believe so. But like, even with how crazy the season has been, do I really? I could I could see a draw. Like I could see it. Me too. It's there's a, there's a, a handful of scenarios I think where the Rapids walk out of Subaru Park with a draw. Yeah. I can't, I mean, barring like some red card wedding in the opening 15 minutes, <laughs> I don't I couldn't imagine the Rapids putting themselves in a position to take all three points on it. Like if it would be one thing if this was like a double game week, right? Right. Where Philly had just played Wednesday. Being maybe a six they pointer for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like maybe they didn't, maybe they, they, they rest a bunch of the guys. But even so, like under Curtin, like Philly's next man up has always been just really good. Um, <laughs> and B Ray, yes, I, I want everybody to reject my reality because, um, Look, I think sports are generally better when people are a lot more positive. Here's, I'm here's my thing trouble. with a game, I'm just having trouble getting there. Here's my thing with a game like this, Dwayne, as a fan, because I've been a fan of bad teams for a lot of my life growing up in Colorado. Um, you know, there were some terrible Nuggets years with some great Nuggets years thrown in, obviously, lots of bad Rockies years. Lots of bad Rockies here. Still lots of bad, bad Rockies. Plenty more coming. But games like this where you know that, right? You like There is no Rapids fans beside our guy B-Ray who is like, six points coming, baby. Like, right? Like, they know what this game is. So going in to a match like this, downtown Dwayne Brown, my guy. Where do you find the joy in watching a game like this? To me, the pressure is completely, completely gone, right? Like, I think they've done the math like we have. They can lose this game. There's still seven to get the points they need. It's fine, right? Like, it's, is this pressure free? Is that is that the secret to the rapid success? Is embracing how I, good the other team is and just doesn't matter? I hope that it's pressure free because the backs up against the wall strategy is not working. Yes, that <laughs> so, is true. Um, Here's okay. so I would throw that in the bin and just, just you know, like I, I root for chaos. So I, almost chaos every, would be winning this game. That would yeah. be chaos. So I, I've not liked really any good teams at any sports. Um, ever uh, in, in, in my many years. And so I've had a few mediocre years, like one good one for a hockey team, and then uh, you- everything else is pretty bad. So um, I just root for chaos. And, like, I, I almost hope that, you know, the the Rapids are not rooting for chaos per se, but – just kind of that like um let's not play under pressure mm-hmm. 
everyone no one is everyone is picking the other team so f it let's just play like the best soccer we can play with no pressure almost that's kind of what i want to yeah it's gonna sound crazy but like almost as if it were a practice or a scrimmage where you just like try all of your best stuff you know and just play the soccer that makes you happy which i know Pull out all so the wild crazy. set piece plays they have written down on a notebook somewhere. Yeah, and and you know they've run at practice and yeah, they want to go have to like Ted Lasso or anything like that. But just like, hey, listen, the Rapids love a Loki's toboggan. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I love that they love that. It's sick. I don't remember what they call it, but they don't call it that. No, I forget what their code word. Matt Pollard would know if he's in the if he's listening. Jump in the comments, Matt Pollard, and tell us. <laughs> um, but. uh Look, you're right. You're right. It's per- like this game is no pressure. So what if this is the like I hate that I'm saying this. This sucks. God damn it. Like maybe this isn't the game where the dumb mistake happens because there's no pressure to win this game. Yeah. If the if if the Rapids do come away with a win, they'll be the first team all year to to win at Philly, which nobody has done. Philly has four losses. All were on the road. Only one of those losses was by multiple goals. That is. I was against FC Sounds like a Rapids win, baby. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Man, that's a wild. That is an impenetrable fortress. Fortress. It's like the dick. Yeah, we used to. It's like Dixon 2016, 2020. Yeah. Or beginning of last year to middle of this year. Until that Austin game. we've lost at home now. (laughs) They can lose at home, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, nothing lasts. Yeah, are they going to run a perfect home season? They have a better chance of doing that than the Rapids. <laughs> have it winning there. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. It's over now. <laughs> Joseph, in thirty seconds or less, lay out. You're asking me to be brief. <laughs> yes, I'm asking you to be brief. This is the challenge. Embrace the challenge. Best case scenario for the rapids realistic Re- like what is the most realistic win for the rapids what is it this weekend the, the most realistic win yeah like the most realistic scoreline or no like yeah like how does it ha- like like rapids nick a set piece goal early and they go super defensive for the rest of the game and uh somehow manage catch a red to card stop- yeah, catch a red card, maybe. Uh, help, um, yeah, and be ready to answer your question. The Rapids have gone undefeated at home before um, in 2016, uh, and they would have done it last serves. year if they didn't lose to Austin at home in to the very start first the game, season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, insane. Uh, but yeah, so basically, how the recipe for a Rapids win is early goal. Maybe it's a set piece. Maybe it's just a weird like the thing that happened in Seattle. Remember when they scored like right in the yeah, opening that three beautiful, minutes? Beautiful, beautiful run of play. That's the type of game that the Rapids would need, but they would need to see out sure. the the second half. Uh, or, you know, I, I guess half and a and, yeah. and a quarter. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the scenario. I find it hard to believe that the Rapids would be able to to manage that. I mean, even Montreal couldn't even win at home against Philly. They're mm-hmm. the second best team in the East right now. Montreal's Just really good. Philly, yeah, Montreal, yeah. Philly's really good. Philly's really good. Montreal's Philly's really good. Really good. Philly is, and I've been kind of like everyone in the office likes to ask me about MLS bets. Me and Yaya. Well, obviously Yaya when he's producing bets, but like Eric, like the non bets hosts will come around and be like MLS. And I'm like, look, there's three good teams in the MLS, like three really good teams in the MLS, and Philly is one of them. I think there's some pretty good teams right below them, but it's Philly, Austin, LAFC. Do you get Philly points? Is what the is what the Rapids have been trying to emulate? Yeah, like their sort of approach to uh, roster management and uh, you know just the team. Basically, it's a team that doesn't have a bunch of star-studded designated players. There's no, they're never going to drop eight million, you know, a year on Chicharito or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to bait Yaya to get into this conversation. Uh, <laughs> Yaya, do you got a scoreline for us? If you're I do listening, hear Yaya's prediction. Um, 
He's not. I guess he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not producing. <laughs> you look. Uh, behind, but either way, you look behind I, the curtain, I, and there's nothing. This team is crazy good, and the Rapids will be really lucky if they get any points. And I think they can't. I mean, this team has the talent to to match Philly. We just haven't seen them put in a performance that proves that really all year. Um, yeah. B Ray's question has me wondering about uh, if we have any update to Diego Rubio, who last I heard is day to day. He was at practice. Spasms. He was fine. He looked fine. Okay. He looked fine. It was back, back injury. Was day to day. They were not worried about this weekend. It's been a problem he's had before. It's not, you know, it's, if you have a bad yeah, back, it, was, it bad kept back, him out. You know, it like, kept him out of a few games last year. Yeah. You have a bad back, you have a bad back, pops up, goes away. It's not like he has like a slipped disc or like, you know, same thing like with that. Keegan, just, right? Who just. Yeah. Just got Keegan, I talked quad, to Keegan, right? and we'll get into our conversation with Keegan at practice. Uh, actually, right after we talk about the homies at Avaca TV, uh, they are truly, and I mean this in every conceivable way, they are the GOAT of Colorado sports television. They have altitude, they have altitude. Don't worry about all the infighting between billionaires, no one cares. Not our drama. We just hop on Ivaca TV, man. That's what we do. We hop on Ivaca TV and we watch the PIDs on Altitude. We also watch the Rockies on AT&T Sportsnet. We catch up on football on the NFL Network. You get the most regional content for the lowest price for sports in Colorado, all in crystal clear HD while using less bandwidth. And you enjoy over 60 entertainment channels, including news, movies, and more. Turn your home into the ultimate game viewing zone. You can even stream your teams from your phone, laptop, or tablet when you're on the go. You can also add on a discounted Sling TV bundle to get ESPN and more. Avaka is only $25 a month plus a $5 receiver fee. Right now, Colorado sports fans get $10 off per month for your first three months. $10 off per month. That's only $15 a month. You would be crazy not to take that deal. Absolutely crazy. So to score it, go to Ivaka.tv. Slash Colorado 10. That's E V O C A dot TV slash Colorado 10. No contracts, no catches. Ivaca TV is made for champions of the remote. Boom. Get Ivaca TV. Um, can you watch Broncos preseason games on there? That's a yaya question. So if he is listening, he can hop on and answer that. I don't know. I don't have Ivaca. I have NFL network exclusives. I don't think so. But oh, yeah. not all pre not all preseason games are NFL I think you do exclusive. get like ABC you get the stuff that's on Fox and, stuff. and yeah. Well then yeah, you do. There you go. You do. You do get Broncos preseason games on there. Um so there you go. I think you get to, if you get ABC and CBS and stuff then you get the regular Broncos games on there too. So there you go. Um you can add Sling for ESPN. So there you go. You there. can watch the Broncos. They have uh, all local channels. They have CBS. <laughs> they have, so every local channel either Spanish or English. You get that, and then you get special special channels like all the other things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout wait, out. oh, he's gone like a fart just, in the wind. Just as mysteriously, just like, <laughs> um, mysteriously <he's> <laughs> um, Okay, so after practice today, we hung out. Me and Yaya, we watched watched everything, watched the whole thing from them walking in to them walking out. Um, Talked to Keegan for a while. He, he was walked off. He was working on the side. Him and Max were working on the side. Max injured in Rapids 2. Um, I believe it was but he's ankle. working. Yeah, he was working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was ankle? They Rapids just, two? yeah, it looked like an ankle from what I could tell. Um, oh, okay. He was, they were. They were doing this weird uh, hip exercise. Maybe it was a hip, right? something like that. Yeah, yeah, I don't, it was something on his right, it was something on his right leg anywhere from the foot to the, um, but yeah. for those who, do, who don't know, he picked it up in uh, the Sunday, uh, yeah. 12 minutes into the Rapids 2 game against, um, now I'm blanking on who it was. I believe it was Vancouver. Um, yeah, that sounds right. Um, no, that doesn't sound right. Was it remember. Houston? They were playing Houston. Tends to go oh, like no, that. Man. Oh my gosh, what are it, we doing? We're does. professionals oh, we're, here, we're, bro. Listen, listen. You, you, got me, you guys got me quizzed. Quizzing me on Rapids two opponents, and I mean, I guess I'm quizzing myself. It was Dallas two, and I didn't remember because North they have Texas an actual, SC yeah, because they have an actual name, not a. Thank um, you, Bure. Shout out, FC Dallas two. 
My guy. Yeah, he's injured. Mar- Mark Hanick also picked up a little knock in that game. Mark Hanick too. played. Okay, so they played 11 on 11 in Texas. Or in Texas. I'm reading his thinking thing. In practice today um, to end it after doing all their, you know, little drills, agility stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Mark Hanick involved the whole time. Not worried about whatever he had in into at all. Um, Keegan, uh, he said around 30 minutes, he kind of fouled on like into the sideline. And his quad hit like a hip back area really hard on that sideline collision and tightened up. And he said he felt fine, got some treatment at halftime, but could feel it. He just wanted to get enough time for beta to get warmed up and he came off. Um, he did like the initial running around agility stuff. And then during the 11, 11 worked out on the side um, said he feels pretty good. Um, I think I wouldn't be too worried about it. Long term, definitely. And I bet you he plays this weekend. I mean, this is his homecoming game. He said he has like a ton of people coming out, tons of family, friends, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're um, saying he's going to push through it even if he isn't? I would be shocked if he didn't play this weekend. Um, but who knows? You know, quads are weird like that. That's like one of those muscles, hammies, quads, calves, like just one little thing can just set it back. So, you know, we're going to wish what the best about for Cal? him. Was he practicing? Uh, No. No, he was not. Yeah. Chest injury, man. Like, you can't really, you don't want to breathe yeah. heavy, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good sign for his ability to work back to fitness. Hey, look, Joseph, thank you for I'm the sorry. downer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. We're having fun here on the DMVR Rapids podcast. Uh, Good Lord. Keegan, yeah, We're trying to make sense of the season, everybody. I'm so homecoming sorry. Homecoming <laughs> goals. Is that a thing? Like, I feel like that's a thing, right? Like, going in, Keegan going home, has tons of friends and family there. Do you think he, we get, like, a Keegan rocket from, like, 40 yards, just bangs the back of the net? No? He's, he usually gets, he usually gets like, one to three, right? He gets one to three, and he's at one. So, I could see it happening. To me, I would, I mean, to me, there isn't another game I would make sure I, like, was aggressively trying to score a goal in. That's me. You know, you, you. I think you get however many tickets. He probably gets all his teammates' tickets that don't know anyone in Philly, right? Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, he probably just, just has all these friends and family. Show. Dwayne, am I crazy? I would score a hat trick every time I went home. But that's just me. There, I just checked the uh, crazy levels on that, and it's at zero percent. Zero for Bang. wanting to score at home in front of your friends and family. So, okay, so Keegan gets I'm one at least. That's, that's a good thing to aim for. Okay, I got you. I got you guys some <laughs> Yasalina. All right. Whoa! Optimist, optimist, check in. Okay? Josalina, let's go. Last- <laughs> In their last 12 meetings, do you know how many wins the Union has <clears throat> against the Rapids? One. Just two. But yeah, Just very two. Close. Just two. They've drawn six and lost four during that stretch. Well, they Just stink. one of those seven came at home. Philadelphia's win rate, home win rate against the Rapids is its second lowest against a team it's faced multiple times at home. The only team that they have uh, a lower win rate against Whoa. at home is the Galaxy, and uh, who what? they have never beaten in at Subaru Park. Crazily enough, this is what mm. happens when you have these inter intra conference or excuse me inter conference mm. matchups. Is that because these teams just don't play, uh, or you know, especially like the last two years, mm-hmm. um, there hasn't been as much back and forth. So you know, they've only just played twelve times. What's the um, difference intra and inter? Does anyone know on this panel? Intra is inside the conference. Inter is no. outside. I so would like have said inter. In, you could have in lied interstate, to me. Interstate and interstate goes between multiple states. So why don't we call them intra states? That's crazy. Because that's called... we call them state highways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. like that. They're <laughs> intra states. So yeah, there you go. Your your optimism check is that the union. This uh, has been. Doesn't Joseph's beat Colorado in a corner presented by <laughs> Evoca TV. <laughs> Evoca TV. Uh, <laughs> um, Billy man. has no chance. I don't know. I, 
no chance. I just have this weird. I felt it after the game, and look, I have something to say about after the game. I, I love how stream of consciousness this spot is. I'm just saying. There, <laughs> there is something about. There's something about after dramatic results, right? And everyone was here. Everyone was on Twitter. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Where the emotional response goes through the roof, right? Like through the roof. Because what else? We invest ourselves in this. We invest our time. We invest our emotions. We invest our thoughts into supporting this club. And so when something like that happens, a 94 minutes and 58 seconds equalizer in a must win game. Uh, it you It's okay to, re, to respond in a passionate way. And I feel like I may have come off. Hmm. I'm going to use this word carefully because I want to make myself look as good as possible here. But <laughs> I'm I, my reaction is always the opposite. My reaction is always calm down. Like, it's fine. We don't have to fire everyone. Not everyone sucks. They do want to win. They do care, right? But after that game specifically, more so than usual, I was just like, look, something weird is going to happen down the stretch. There's going to be the opposite. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And a, just a gut-wrenching result like that means something else is coming. My question for you yeah. is, were the games against Columbus and Vancouver not equally gut-wrenching? Maybe it goes. Maybe that's part of the, the, the this one. <laughs> And now it has to go. <laughs> now it has to go. This Dwayne, part. what do you think? What do you think? Uh, Mitch's craziness level is at now. Like what you were at zero yeah. percent earlier. How, how, like where? How far has he taken it up in the last ten minutes? I, I, I think once we brought physics into the uh, into the conversation, we've gained a few percentage. This more. is a pod of learned doctors. Okay, we are. I only have a master's degree. So. I Dr. Have, Samuelson is my father. <laughs> I have quite literally never taken one physics class in my life. Um, what's a physics? That's shocking after um, the description. Wow, Dwayne. Low blow, dude. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Um, okay, so <laughs> Philly. Okay, Philly, we're moving on. We're moving on. We immediately jump into a midweek contest here. Against a team that came into the dick and punked, 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 put it on the Rapids. Right? Like, put it on. Three goals in nine minutes, was it? Something like that? Yeah, something like that. Three goals, rapid succession to start the game. Rapids actually looked really good the rest of the way. Didn't get anything out of it. I think they kind of dominated the rest of the game outside of those th nine minutes. Doesn't matter because you lost by three. Well, and also, I'm pretty sure they just. Uh, yeah, of course. Like it's it's a Gary Smith team, yeah, of course. right? Like the moment that they had a lead or a significant lead, they just uh, they sat everybody behind. So I don't know. I think it was expected for the Rapids to look better after be going of down three zero. Well, anyone, the the yeah, game. because everyone you get. 75 percent of the field to yourself we can yeah. <laughs> we can take a positive takeaway from that is that when the teams give the rapids the ball they do look generally look competent great. yeah i like b-raid national sucks but okay so you have there's okay so out of the five we said if they win all three games at home out of the five road games you need that means you need two wins dc and la those are the two games because DC, because they're terrible, and LA, because the Rapids have not lost to LA since pre Anthony Hudson. Right? Whoa! The Galaxy cannot beat the Rapids. It's been since, like, I think 2017. Um, yeah. They lost Joseph. Once. See, this is this is this is why Joseph is on all the time. It's amazing. Listen, like even when Anthony Hudson was here, we saw Zlatan come up to 
I think we only saw Zlatan play once at the Dick yep. because he got suspended yep. for one. And But either way, during that era of the Galaxy, the Galaxy came up here like three times during when Anthony Hudson was around and didn't win a single one. Frazier and Casey haven't ever lost to the Galaxy as Rapids manager. Um, it's the longest. I think th- when, when the Rapids beat them at home earlier this season, that extended the sh- their sh- unbeaten streak to the longest unbeaten streak that either of the two teams had had against each other, which is actually saying a lot because they've both been in MLS since 96. Um, so that is actually one of those streaks that you can point to and say, wow, that is um, generally remarkable. Um, but yeah, nice. the Rapids have the LA's number. So they got to win that game. Okay. All right. Just was just talking me into it. As long as you draw Nashville, right? Like you, like they win giving... their games at home, draw Nashville, beat DC, uh, beat DC and LA, and then they're in. That is that is the roadmap. Simple as that. Dwayne, Dwayne, my guy. That's more than seven points. <laughs> Which hey man, you. I hope, I hope that I'm wrong. Are taking shots on air, my guy. And I According do, think, Yaya. I do think, <laughs> I do think beating Nashville is totally, totally. What? There. I, I, yeah, I, me too. I, mean, I think all these games are here. Why do I get myself into this, Dwight? I, I don't know. That's kind of your thing, man. It's, uh, I would immediately slide back a, into they're in it if they beat Nashville. And I think they even can't. If, they like, if, I, if no, I'm sorry, looking no. at like a team that looks intimidating that we will beat, mm-hmm. you know, it's not in my original prediction from you know post match over the weekend. Um, but if I'm looking at it realistically, you know, on the road in Nashville, you know, a, a, a game that we would normally say that we would lose, right? I, I think that is a winnable match for us. Um, yeah. I, it's it's not one that that I would go into as a Rapids fan feeling intimidated or that you know we're certainly going to lose because Nashville not a great home team. Yeah, I th- I think that we're we're there. You know, we're not we're pretty equal. Like I look at those two clubs, they're pretty equal, and I do think there's. <laughs> I hope that there's some embarrassment about the last one. And now, you know, the guys want to fix that. And so that's where I give it the added bonus to Rapids because of that embarrassment. Now there's going to be, you know, a little bit of payback that they want to deliver. So I would give that advantage Rapids. Wallace, did you, how, did you just, Joseph, did you just leave Saturday? Like, did you, did you stick around? I did not stay for the fireworks. Well, I even um, mean like you know, I, I just mean like even like post match things moving no, around. I think I turned tail uh, and dipped out. Yeah, I think I just like as That's soon fair. as that, as soon as that goal went in, I was just like, <laughs> it's like I had to I had to break out my phone and like delete sure. like the dra- the full time tweet draft that me, me I too. had. Me too. Yeah, I had to delete. delete preps. Yep. I saw and... Brandon Plone. I saw me, Keith Richards. We all had our final draft up and ready, uh, but. My point is, did you see Lawless afterwards after he walked from getting his man of the match paddle back to do it's the interview or. on the other side? It, what? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> just kidding. That's fair. I should know better. I should know better. I'll be better. And I'm working on myself. Um, it's it's actually a, a paddle, but we will go into rafting tech technicalities later. Oh, my what's God. The, what's really? the difference? Yeah, I want to know. This is all of a sudden. And or really is connected to the craft. Oh, 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 Naval Adam, Dwayne in the house. Let's go. Disconnected tool for moving the craft. Wow, my God, so you have flabbergasted me tonight. I feel so, but more about your flabber. <laughs> um, but honestly, who cares? I, I love that C thirty eight does that. I think it's one of the coolest yeah. things in rapid tradition. <laughs> it's called an oar or a paddle. I, I say they're both right because technically, out of the ring, you could no, it's not right. It's out wrong. of the ring, You're wrong. And it would still then it would be a paddle, you know. So I guess you could clamp a paddle into an oar ring, and it would be a short oar. <laughs> um. 
<laughs> Listen, it beats it beats the Timbers, uh, you know, tree slabs for every goal. Um, my opinion. yeah, but I do think it's a cooler transition. It's a way cool. Okay, but my point is, did you see Lawless <laughs> with it <laughs> walking across the field? Oh, so, about soccer. What? So about soccer, you were saying something about soccer. This is actually not soccer. This is very per- oh. this is human interest story. We're far um, past soccer. <laughs> soccer. What is like, what? <laughs> um, you're in the wrong place for that, Bucko. Um, Lawless was as emotional as I have ever seen a rapid after this. After this loss. I call it, I keep calling it a loss. It was a draw. Ugh, it was a draw. After the draw. Some draws are losses. They are, correct. But he was in emotion. The locker room was, by all accounts, both on the record and just hearing things, a mess. It was emotions, right? Like it was truly an emotional like. I guess what I'm trying to say is this defense has been the problem with just mental mistakes and giving up these, these hundred percent goals that don't need to be there and probably shouldn't be there from the run of play, but they turn in these mental mistakes again, having a game like this, where they have, have such an emotional response where it's such a forces you to ponder and address and look in the mirror Do we see a fantastic defensive performance this weekend because of that? Where it's, we've looked in the mirror and this is who we are. We know the identity as a defensive team. We rode the first half plus of the season as a really good defensive team. Or is it the straw that breaks the camel's back? This defense is toast. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Where how, do how do you expect the Raptors to pull the emotions and 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 use them? Like which direction do you see it going? Or is it doesn't even matter? Losses like things draws draws happen like that, and it just <laughs> nothing. There's nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because like the skill sets there. These are professional athletes. They know how to play defensive soccer. It's just it's the mental collapse and like. No, that's my point, though. Those yeah, mental, know, what know if that's saying. what stops it? You're saying it does, oh, it's just going to happen no matter what? Is that what you're well, saying? No, no, no. No, I wasn't saying that. I was just saying, like, you know, I, I'm not a betting guy, but if that was the bet, I, there's no way I could bet on that because it's not a soccer thing. That's That's an individual mental strength and, you know, mental wisdom or whatever you want to call it. It's like a putting nuts on your table game. I don't. Right? I just don't like know. Put a nuts on the table game. Say again. It's a put a nuts on the table game. Yes. Right. right? Show it. Do yeah. it. This is like you need. This is a. This is the hardest stretch you're going to face as a team, as a, a, eleven players, as a twenty people on the active roster, whatever it is. This is as hard as it's going to get. Right now. Yeah. Right this, here. This would be the time to do it. Is you know like. I guess, Joseph, where do you see this team's mental state after this? Like, what is your best guess? You've watched this team for a really long time. You've analyzed yeah. it. You've written about it. Like, when you see a team as emotionally affected by a game, is it, like, to me, that's like, yes. Like, it, it either means there's a turnaround coming or this is the start of a spiral. It's rarely anything in the middle. Right. Uh, that's, that's kind of my point. Like one way or the so other, which one I is I guess it? How, how this team comes out in this next, like over this road trip, how many points they can pick up here. Like, I mean, it is a real make or break moment for the team because it's something they've been bad at all year. Even if like, like, so the, the recent defensive errors, that's, that's been a, that's been a recent phenomenon, right? That's like the last five, six games where, I mean, it, there's bits and pieces of it all season. Maybe back to like the but international early, break. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, really ever yeah. since like June. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, that game in New York city is a great example Yep. when yeah, then they no just kind of, yep. they, they should have won one zero and they just gave up a really equal parts mistake, equal parts, good goal. Um, so listen, like how they come out from this road trip will tell us a lot about whether that Houston game was a mentally mental break. 
for the team or whether it was something that they're able to come back from. And um, honestly, I don't know if we'll, we'll ever really know for sure until we just come out right. on the other side of this. I don't know how much you can take away from what's expected to be a loss in Philly. Right. So like if they if they lose that game, it may not be an indication of like where the team is currently at mentally. But if they sure. go to Nashville but and they lose they to lose. Nashville, if they lose to D.C. Yeah. And if they lose six zero to Philly, too. Right. Um, so like all of that will will give us like a real good indicator of where the team's like psyche currently is. And um, honestly, like I'm really looking at that midweek Nashville game as I'm almost really looking past Philly just because of where the expectations are for this game. And if I see this team come out and steal a point or three against Nashville, um, that would tell me that they have turned a corner. Me too. Because not only would it mean that they've gotten a second road win, right? It would also mean they responded and went and won or took points from a pointsable game, like a, you know, a, a game they should get points from. Um, and if they don't, like you head into DC where a win could see where a win could kickstart a rally, but yep. also it would require post Nashville for the team to go on a five game win streak and they haven't gone streaking more than four games unbeaten this year at all. And so not it would take a miracle. April. Yeah. I mean, do yeah, that's the question. Yep. Do you believe in miracles? I do. All right. I do I can see it. happen. Yeah. We're getting it's a fun lounge on Saturday, no matter what. It's going to be a fun lounge. Joseph, plug your stuff in very quickly. Uh, get me on Twitter, JSPSAM. Mute Dwayne. <laughs> um, uh, my my writings are on my website, josephsamelson.com. You can get me on Twitter. That's where I post all the fun facts I stumble across about the Rapids. Um, yeah, that's really it. Dwayne? Uh, I'm going to use my plug to plug a comment real quick from B-Ray is that he said, we need to be better disciplined. We're third worst team in the yellows and that hurts us. Uh, this is, this is my response to that. I think correct, but I think that if we fix the, fix the mental problems, uh, then we're not going to be relying on arguing w- with the ref to try to get, you know, yes. call in our favor, which causes more totally. yellows for us. Yep. So I think that's a package deal. So if we see the mental corrections on defense, we're not allowing crazy goals. Uh, then those yellow cards are going to fix themselves as well. So I'm cool. going to use my bump to bump B Ray's comment there. It's a good love one. that. Shout out B Ray. Um, like and subscribe on YouTube. Get your membership to DNVR Sports. Come to a bar when it opens in a couple of weeks. Um, buy your stuff. Say hi at the future tailgates. See us at the tailgates. Yes. Talk to us. Say what's up. And more important than all of that, up the pits. pits. <laughs>